Our common purpose is to protect our planet. There is no planet B. I'm not moving to Mars. <laughs> this is our home and we need to um, respect it and regenerate it. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank AREI, uh, their board and advisory committee, and CHIP for inviting me to participate in um, our day, and specifically to talk about art as the climate connector and communicator. My name's Mia Hanek, and I'm the executive director of Millennium Art. I am based in Missoula, Montana. And before I was heading to Colorado, my 11-year-old son, who is part of Generation Alpha, asked me, so what exactly do you do, Mom? How do I explain it to my friends? Because <laughs> you are always working and never take a break. So I said, well, the easy answer is I'm an environmental artist. I am a climate activist. Um, the fancy answer is I'm an executive director. <laughs> and the most important part of what I do is I work every day to try to make this world a better place for you and your brother and your friends and the next generation and the generations after that. The work never ends and it's more urgent than ever before. And um, I've been doing this for over 20 years. My environmental art journey actually started in 2001 when I was 22 years old. And I decided to go to East Africa by myself. I was also a cultural anthropologist. And this is um, a journey where I went to study cultures and ended up being inspired to uh, be an environmentalist. When I was in Madagascar, I saw how the forests were just gutted and not being replanted and it was turning into barren desert. And I um, came back to the US and said, how do we help people visualize this? And you know, realizing that art is one of the tools to bring it back to the United States, I realized only 26% of Americans had passports and only half of that actually used them to go see the world. So it's mission critical for people to immerse themselves and see the destruction and devastation firsthand and then be educated on um, what are the solutions to remedy this. Um, so I'm really here today to talk about how can art help combat climate change by accelerating climate action. What can artists communicate that we haven't learned yet from the media and news, from documentaries, from scientific data and reports, and so forth. I'm here to share some insights on practical solutions artists can offer to tackle climate change through powerful, aesthetically designed information that makes science and data more accessible and actionable. So um, the presentation I'm going to share with you today is about Act Now XR. It's a combination experience of virtual reality, mixed reality, physical data art installations, um, all designed to support the United Nations Act Now campaign. The Act Now campaign started out as um, you know, supporting individual action on climate change and sustainability. And this year it expanded to support the other SDGs. For us, we're specifically um, focusing on SDG 7 for uh, affordable, clean energy, for climate action, life on land, and life below water. So as we've all seen with the big climate summits taking place, it is time to sound the alarm. And uh, we are reaching tipping points that will be irreversible, heading towards collapse. These are all fear-based points, and we always try to use an inspiration-based approach using art. That's what I've been doing for the past 20 years, but I feel like we're out of time, and it's, start, it's time to start using the fear-based approach. Um, <laughs> What, uh, it's al always when we start an art project, it's important to figure out what is our call to action. There's so many different causes and organizations fighting for different things. So many breakthroughs in science and technology. And for us, really the messaging is to phase out fossil fuels, ramp up clean energy, and restore ecosystems. 
2030 is um, basically our target. I know a lot of people talk about 2045 and 2050, but honestly, 2030 is kind of the D-Day for the work I feel I'm engaged with, and whether that's the Paris Agreement, um, SDGs, and you know, protecting at least 30% of the land and oceans by 2030. And that's why it's time to act now. This is an example, sorry, I'm just gonna have a sip of water here, of um, past art installations we've done over the past two decades. Um, this one is trapped inside, it's a life a tree on a life support system that has oxygen and water dripping into the roots. Um, sadly, eventually it dies. We did this with Wangari Mathai and UNEP in um, Nairobi, Kenya in 2009. We did the CO2 cube for COP15 in Copenhagen, which I'll talk more about in a second. We were one of the first teams with some of the people in the audience here that managed to illuminate the United Nations um, during the UN Climate Summit, and then during COP21, architectural projection mapping on UNESCO in Paris. And this just shows some of the large-scale messaging. It's really important for public art to be out in the streets in front of people so they have this serendipitous experience. Even if they're not searching for something, it's in front of them and engages audiences. So in 2009, we did the um, CO2 cube, visualizing a ton of change. The United Nations asked us to say, um, well, the whole conference, COP15, is about taxing and trading one metric ton of carbon dioxide. What is it? How big is it? How does it look? So I interviewed all these heads of, you know, chiefs of sustainability for Fortune 50 companies. No one could answer the question. It's ultimately three stories high, 27 by 27, so we built this cube, floated it on the lake in um, Copenhagen, and projected a climate change story onto it. And it proved that, you know, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. On all the, the fronts of the newspapers around the world, it wasn't, you know, men in business suits shaking hands for the opening, it was the art piece. And that just um, created ripples throughout the world for the opening. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and so, fast forward, you, you know, another decade later, um, we are currently in the process of building this new art installation, Laka Leloup, and uh, we were blessed to have it named by the Washoe tribe who live on the border of California and Nevada by Lake Tahoe. Laka Leloup means coming together for a common purpose. Our common purpose is to protect our planet. There is no planet B. I'm not moving to Mars. <laughs> this is our home and we need to um, respect it and regenerate it. So this particular installation is um, 40 feet long, 16 feet high, and 14 feet wide. It has an interactive tunnel immerse that you can uh, immerse through it. And um, it's reflective by day with two-way polycarbonate mirrors so that you can see yourself reflected in your environment and contemplate your role in your environment. And then at night or in the dark, it illuminates with the LED system that comes out through the mirror and it has a data visualization system. And the data that we play is all about the uh, global climate tipping points. And uh, this, you know, we have videos, but we don't have time. Just to give an example of climate tipping points as well as ecosystem restoration. And we do it in a, you know, it's not like a not geo type of way. It's a very artistically created, um, so it's something people haven't seen before. Also in this, um, just like the CO2 cube represented one metric ton of carbon dioxide, this installation represents the amount of energy draw because it has an audio and visual system that is equivalent to the power an average 2,000 square foot home takes. So this helps people visualize, you know, what would it take to really power my home with renewable energy? Um, and how do we start there, one home at a time? So also, while the art installation travels, we're going to demonstrate different types of clean energy. 
And for example, with uh, solar panels, it takes 28 solar panels, I think I have this here, like, um, and 11 lithium ferrous phosphate batteries. Uh, also, for generators, they have renewable diesel that you don't need to modify existing generators. You could just drop it in and immediately save, you know, reduce 80% of CO2 emissions. And hydrogen is new, but we are, you know, it's a year-long tour, and we are going to be uh, looking into that as well. Um, in addition to the physical installation, because that's something that if people are on site, they could experience, but we also want to reach the rest of the world. And so we have designed a virtual reality experience and a mixed experience. So the art installation will live in the metaverse with another world that we created. Um, this will be launching at COP28. Uh, the Green Zone is at the Expo City where the World Expo was hosted and the Al Wazel Dome was the centerpiece of that. During the World Expo, we did a 3D digital twin of the Al Wazel Dome. We worked with the World Expo Committee, created this. We have an awesome video that I don't have time to show you, maybe, <laughs> maybe at the end if I talk really fast. Um, and so it's a 360 architectural projection mapping show. For this, um, we're going to update the content and again have uh, content on the tipping points. Um, I'll show you that slide in a sec. This is an example of the prototype we did of the Al Wazel Dome. You know, and we have renewable energy and uh, there's in-world activation. So people could actually take actions um, that are trackable throughout the campaign. Um, So what we're doing with this experience is inviting people to come through the portal in Dubai and then fast forward to 2030. And it's kind of, if you remember those choose your own experience sci-fi books, which were my favorite, <laughs> um, you get to choose. If we act today, act now, this is what the future will look like. If we don't, this is what we'll, it will look like. And so we're going to take people to these tipping points, to the, the coral reefs, to the Greenland ice sheet, to the boreal forest, to the Amazon rainforest, um, Arctic and Antarctic, et cetera. So people could witness and be immersed. Because I feel like you know, art evokes emotion, emotion evokes change. But if you're literally not being impacted directly by it, it's hard to connect. I mean, we've seen the fires in Maui, the floods everywhere around the world right now, and people feel bad, but they're still not acting. So it, unless you're immersed and you see how it makes you feel, we're hoping that this will make a difference. Um, and this is, again, this is where the fear-based shift in my 20-year career <laughs> comes. We're going dark. Uh, so the, the climbing tipping points we're going to ex explore, it's going to be three experiences, the cryosphere, biomes, and circulation. So one experience will be Arctic sea ice, permafrost, ice sheets, glaciers. The other one, you immerse into a Great Barrier Reef, Amazon rainforest and boreal, and then uh, biodiversity for Madagascar and DRC. Circulation, big one coming up with El Nino this year. Um, the, monsoon shift and the currents, um, et cetera. So this will be an immersive experience all ages could experience um, in virtual reality. And these will be the data visualizations that come up on uh, the art installation. And the important thing about the climate tipping points is once we cross one of them, uh, you know, it just goes into this domino effect and things spiral out of control. And we're starting to even see that now and this is why I think 2030 is more of like the red alarm, sound alarm than like 2045 or 2050. This is a good example. This just came out a week or two ago for the planetary boundaries. Another visualization, the cool thing with our artwork is that we could make this data visualization come to life. So where it shows what all the tipping points are, you could select it and then be transported to it. So it's not just about what everyone's used to seeing and turning a blind eye to, climate change, pollution, biodiversity. This is what we're fed in the media and people don't wanna see it anymore. So instead we need to shift to the solutions and there isn't one, there's many, 
phase out fossil fuels, decarbonize energy supplies, transform energy demand, recapitalize nature, carbon dioxide removal and sequestration, uh, put me methane back in the bottle, and finance net zero growth in developing countries. So really believe it's a combined effort um, and they all need to be accelerated now. Act now. Um, also, solutions exist, and what we need to do is really collaborate with existing campaigns and resources that are there. I know there's so many organizations fighting their own fight, but if we collaborate and support um, each other, we can make a bigger impact. Um, again, I mentioned these are the four SDGs we're focusing on. Um, and then also, you know, ecosystem restoration. Like this is mission critical and it's really important to have indigenous people and local communities be the implementers of this and to have finance and education and training um, and safety and protection to help them do that. And ecological civilization, this is what we're looking at, the indigenous peoples, local communities, and most importantly, also civil society and youth. Um, okay, I am out of time. <laughs> but, um, you know, also, most importantly, it's not just about creating art and, and creating awareness. That was last decade. We did a lot of art to create awareness. Now it's trackable action. And so the UN Act Now campaign has an app, and we have a program through the app. So far, they've uh, tracked 15 million actions. Their goal is to reach a billion actions by 2023. And with our campaign, we feel like we can make a huge push towards that because our campaign launches... Um, at COP28 and runs all the way through the next climate summit um, at the UN. Uh, so with the resources that exist, ultimately the goal, what do we all want? You know, clean air, potable water, nutritious food, and safe shelter for all. Um, this is just, slide, it might be cut off there. Uh, so this is the tour in uh, COP28. We are launching um, the virtual world where you could go and immerse yourself into all of the climate tipping points. And then starting in January through September, we're going to LA, Phoenix, Dallas, Boulder, back here for our day part two. <laughs> and then New York for Climate Week and the UN Summit of the Future. Um, so that's it, and um, thank you. <laughs>